Economists predicted Africa would be booming by the turn of the decade, and they seem to have been right. Over the last 12 months, many new developments within the data center spectrum changed the landscape of the country forever. iColo is one of the operators which has attracted international attention, and joining me now is CEO Harjit Sherikel to share his thoughts on the market and explain the company's strategy. Uh, Ranjit, thanks a lot for talking to me. Pleasure. Let's maybe start by talking about Africa as a whole, and what has really catapulted Africa into the spotlight over the last, let's say, 12, 24 months. So I think the, the fact that you know, it has more than one-sixth of the world's population, connectivity over the last 10 to 15 years has not grown 5-10%. It's in many folds year on year. Um, the fact that technology has taken over you know, everybody's lives, from the farmer to the CEO in Africa, it, it is now the center of attention in many ways is the, you know, the strategies of most large companies trying to reach out uh, and, and basically build their global platforms uh, around the population in Africa. So I think this is the time now, more than five years ago, and certainly in five years in the future, it will probably become even more um, significant. Okay, and actually the future was my question in the next decade. Okay. Because um, 2020 has always been spoken about the date or the year when Africa is really going to boom big time when it comes to interesting investment from hyperscalers to smaller colocation providers, public cloud, private cloud, everything. How do you see the continent shifting in the next 10 years? Are we going to have an Africa more or less almost at the same level? I wouldn't say Europe, but really competing with the larger markets. So, I mean, I think you have more than 10 countries that are, you know, averaging 5 to 6% growth in general. Um, you have a few, uh, a couple of economies that are close to the 500 billion mark. Um, there are many now that are past the 50 to 100 billion dollar mark, and they're all, you know, clipping at 5 to 10%. Um, when I moved to Kenya in 2011, you know, if any, if you were an ISP and you had 500 kilometers of fiber to the ground, you were a, mm. you know, you were a big ISP. Um, these days, most ISPs add a few hundred kilometers every month. Okay. Um, so you know, the scale of an average ISP now in Kenya is 10 to 15,000 kilometers of fiber, and I expect that to become very similar. So, you know, in 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 a decade, you will see that from a connectivity as well as assets in the ground, which provide the bedrock for data centers as well as the ISPs um, will be fairly advanced, which also naturally means, um, you know, there will be better connectivity uh, in general for people in fairly remote parts of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, we have some interesting statistics like, you know, only 14% of Kenya is electrified, okay. um, which of course means there's a long way to go. But, you know, quite a bit of that will mean uh, most people will be connected to the internet before they actually get electricity. Mm. Um, that changes the dynamics quite a bit, and eventually when they do get electricity, the connectivity portion also changes. So I think in 2020, 2020, towards the end of that decade, you'll see quite a bit of the power issues would have been resolved in the country. Uh, but connectivity and people using technology will s still be far ahead of people what is, you, you know, people using conventional electricity. Uh, and that, I certainly think, will also drive the economy more towards the platform where they're using services from the internet more uh, than what we, you know, we would think they would. Okay, that's, that's actually very interesting. Uh, one thing that people say as well that works in favor of Africa is the not having legacy infrastructure. So you don't have to worry about just the upgrading and retrofitting infrastructure. It's easy just to build with the new technologies. Do you see that starting to happen now? Um, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I think it would have been nice if we had more. I mean, if the telecom companies, the, you know, the parastatals had done their job 20 years ago, that would be, they'd be more corporate on the ground, there'd be yeah. better connectivity, routes have been best, better established. Um, with that said, a lot of that is being built today. So there's new roads coming up. So people are, you know, beginning to put fiber on the ground in some of those, not all, but, you know, in many places. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of private enterprise trying to tap into that. So I can't say that um, we've skipped generations. On the mobile, yes, you know, you, you're finding that, um, you know, my service in Nairobi is actually quite outstanding. It, it certainly beats what uh, we are, yes. my, my mobile service in Atlanta. You know, I think what, what we get in Nairobi is, is um, Pretty world class. Uh, so yes, we have those fronts, and most of Africa these days is mobile coverage. Uh, but ultimately, fiber is fiber. You know, local presence of, of servers are local presence. I mean, you can't beat that. Um, <clears throat> so I think yes, we will catch up. Is probably the right way to, to, mm. to look at it versus saying we've skipped a generation. Okay. Uh, before I go into Icolo, you mentioned energy. Actually, so only yeah. forty percent of the country is like electrified. Yeah. Um, is renewable energy a topic yep. in, in the sector there? It is, and you know, I think in Kenya we are blessed from that perspective. Um, you know, I would say somewhere between seventy to eighty percent of our current energy is renewable, so it comes from hydro, comes from wind, 
comes from um, solar. Uh, we have a big project. All of Kenya today generates somewhere between 1,500 to 1,800 megawatts of power. So it's not a lot, okay. but it's still, you know, for an African country, not bad. It's reasonably stable. I mean, our data centers have about 98, though 95 to 98 percent availability, which is far better than we were expecting it to be. Um, we have a new wind project coming up or has come up and it's already flying into the grid, um, which is for 650 megawatts. So as you can see, large um, energy projects that are green are being implemented and built. So we pride ourselves in Kenya from that perspective that, you know, we, we data centers are never known to be energy friendly, but actually we feel, uh, or environmentally friendly, but we feel that uh, in Kenya, we actually have quite a bit of offer. Okay. Uh, from from that perspective. And then speaking about Icola, so you launched the company. It's been less than five years. Still. Yeah. Um, what is it like to launch a data center startup in Africa and in Kenya? Is there any support, taxes, government? Is it easy to find um, skilled people? No, actually, we we got zero support, um, and I'm not sure that was important. I think in the end, government's roles are regulation and things like that, which they did. So we we, we operate in an economy in a, an environment in Kenya where the you know the regulators have been very um, modern. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't, from a taxing taxation perspective, no, they were not, I mean, we didn't get any benefits per se. Okay. Um, we, we, we feel that, um, I mean, generally that would have made things a little bit easier, but that was still not the biggest part. I think mm -hmm. the biggest part was raising the capital to build these infrastructure yeah. projects. Which that you, was, you have to at the moment. which of course we, yeah. we had to source from different parties and, and right. it's a competitive space. So in the end, I yeah. think, you know, everybody had different versions and ways of accomplishing it. We had a different strategy. Um, and maybe just to touch on that a little bit, conventional wisdom is that you build in Nairobi. Uh, we instead said, no, we'll build in Mombasa because we felt that's where the internet comes from. That's where all the yeah. cable landing stations are. So as a result of us opening in 2017, what, Mombasa is now part of the global map of pretty much any platform company, connectivity hub, uh, connectivity enterprise uh, around the world, and people are paying attention to uh, to that. So we, we feel that, um, you know, is, is probably our contribution in general. Um, and our strategy, as a result, was a bit different from what everybody else wanted to do. Okay. And it seems to be going quite well, because a very yep. interesting transaction, and maybe Mustafa, the, the way you build the market out there, it's the 40% of uh, in private equity interest yes. in traction going to the company. Um, what's the partnership like? What's, what can we expect from it? So, I mean, Interaction has been a partner of ours for, for now for a while. Um, I would say very close to when we started. Um, they've helped, up, helped us with all the technical uh, designs and building our data centers. So, as you see, as a result of that, what you see in our data centers is they're very close to any of the facilities that you have in Europe, or maybe even a little bit better. Um, we have worked with their engineering teams, their sales teams, for the last two to three years, uh, and very closely. I mean, even at ITW, we spend quite a bit of, we have many joint meetings together. Um, they have acquired a 40% stake in the company, so which of course means for them, they feel that we have achieved what we set out to do together, um, and they would like to, you know, sort of that materialized into an equity position. So we feel. Uh, for far more secure, our customers feel far better about it, knowing that there is a bigger brand supporting us. Um, and connectivity into Europe as well. Correct. So and solutions as well for customers that are looking, you know, for more than one location, um, you know, than mm -hmm. just Kenya. So I, I think that is, you know, optically, and and I think in many ways for us reassured us. So in in data centers, the the big issue is, is uh, capacity. You've got to keep building capacity, and often, you know, the the the, the revenue generated is trailing from the amount of money you spend. Mm. Um, we have we have now you know built our first facility in Mombasa. We are now going to open a second facility in Nairobi, uh, which opens in August this year, which is for about 300 racks. Uh, we have started working on a third site uh, in in Mombasa. So okay. all of this requires copious amounts of capital, mm. um, and which is you know I think a role where our shareholders as well as interaction uh, play a role. Okay. But well, the interaction transaction was really, really interesting because it was the first time a very large yes. collocation provider really stepped into Africa and made a public announcement of an investment like this. Correct. Um, I recently spoke to the CFO of Interaction as well, and he said he will want to expand maybe beyond Kenya to three, four other markets around the region. Could you be the company that's going to take them into those markets? So it's possible. I mean, I think in many ways we work together and, you know, quite a few of our strategies. Our, our intention from day one has always been to, to go into other markets. Um, you know, we certainly because the company is, is partially owned by Interaction, um, you know, that, that will have to be in concert with them. 
whether we are the only, um, you know, I think that's that's for them to decide. But we we certainly, as a company, have have aspirations to be in in more than just Kenya um, at this stage. However, our focus just now is to make sure that what we have in Kenya works well and we have enough capacity to, to sort of build up. Uh, we're also in a fairly unique position. I think we, having built uh, the Nairobi site, uh, we've added another 300 racks. From a pure rack count perspective, we've sort of quickly become one of the biggest um, carrying little data center operators in Africa. Um, we're certainly the largest now in, in Kenya. Um, but certainly, I think from a even African perspective, which also gives you scale of the market. I, I'm excluding South Africa because the, for what you have the there is, is very different and it's much, much larger. But in general, um, you know, I think we, so once we've attained that and the Kenyan market in itself is constrained by size and population, mm -hmm. it's only natural for us to look at uh, new locations, but baby steps. Okay. And then to uh, quickly finish as well, from one to 10, how sort of excited are you? about the next 10 years for ICOLO and oh, very Africa excited, as a whole. extremely excited because I, I think this, um, you know, we've, we've built a company in Kenya, which is at the cutting edge of technology with, a, a, you know, with effectively only Kenyans. So we don't use any fancy consultants. We work with Interaction, okay. but we've built a company that is, you know, designed, built, operated by, you know, Kenyans, which is probably the bigger achievement for us. And the fact that we didn't have to bring in any "Quote unquote specialists and things like that." Um, so it is possible for Africans to build African infrastructure mm. on their own. This is, is, is for me, and and I certainly think the the continent uh, is only going to go uh, many many steps mm. forward, um, than, and then probably and it's under underappreciated at this stage. Mm. Okay. Well, we do we have seen some um, university programs, and they, this, they do seem to be quite good. Yes. And able to really get these people skilled up for the IT world. So. Absolutely. The future is all bright. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Okay, Rajit, thanks for talking to me. Um, Thank you for Don't having forget me. you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram and also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.